In this video, we're going to import the 3DS model file and organize it for use in our future animations. I'm going to begin by going to the 3DS Max icon and pull down to where it says Import. We're going to import a non-native file format. So we're looking for a .3DS model file. 3DS is a model file type that can be used to exchange models between 3D Studio and a variety of other environments. 3D Studio can handle a wide array of model types. If we look at file format type, we can see a list down here below. And mine is set to all formats for right now, so it's looking for any model type that's acceptable. So I have a .3DS model that uh, we're going to import here. I'm going to go ahead and select Open. And when I do, I get a pop-up dialog that says Merge Objects with Current Scene, Replace Current Scene, or Convert Units. Generally speaking, for our work, it will be Merge Objects with Current Scene. Should you choose to go use Rhino or some other application to build a furniture piece or something as Entourage, you'll simply want to merge that with a scene rather than to replace the scene. Be certain that the units that you're using in both environments is the same. Then we don't have any conversion issues. Uh, you don't simply want to make something in another environment with generic units without giving consideration to exactly what those units mean. And so it's best not to even have to go the route of using convert units. I'm going to click OK now. We get a subsequent dialog box that says you want to match the animation length to that of the file uh, that we're importing. And no, we're just going to leave the animation length as it is in the host. And um, why you might want to do this is you could have built up an animation in another file and you're actually going to import that in to a model file that has little or no animation and we're going to allow the imported piece to end up dominating the animation side of the composition. So uh, we're going to just leave this the way it is, click no, and generally that's the rule for most of what you'll do here. When the model comes in, you'll notice that it's all highlighted still. If we just select anywhere on the screen, uh, now that it's been deselected, we can gain access to the individual pieces and parts. By default, all of this comes in with the same CAD color, and uh, if we se select the wall right now, uh, and I'm going to go to the Modify tab, we can begin to manipulate the uh, basic properties of the individual pieces and parts. Importantly, you want to give items names and assign a CAD color to them so that it's easy to distinguish one from the other. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select on the color swatch next to wall and maybe give it this green color. And you should notice now out here in the scene um, that it's slightly green, although the bounding box green color at the moment um, doesn't allow that to be very clear. I'm going to go ahead and select uh, all of the floor elements inside here and you'll notice uh, it's saying four objects selected. Um, because I have crossing box turned on right now, if I cut across the inside here of those four um, elements, I know that it's going to pick them up in their entirety. As long as they don't touch anything else, I'm safe. So we have four floors here. And I'm going to change the color of all of those at once. Maybe I'm going to change this to a kind of golden color. and. Uh, we should also see now that um, it's obvious that these are a slightly different color. Okay, so you might have noticed also that the parts already in large part have names on them. Uh, that's a benefit you get from taking a file that's been used for a while. So even though it's a 3DS file, uh, I've already gone through and named most of the pieces and parts. There are some items in here that you'll need to dispose of. Uh, with this, this 3DS file, uh, there were some artifacts left over from a previous use of it and we won't be needing those for right now. So if you come down to where it says all of these items that say free, uh, we want to select all of that business and you want to go ahead and delete that um, because it won't be necessary inside this um, particular version of the file. Okay and there's also a grouping of those called wall unit. You can go ahead and throw that as well. Next what I want to do is go through and group items up based on two things, their material and our need to move things um, in sort of units because it's easier for us to manipulate and push those items around inside the file. If I go to my select by name, you'll notice that, uh, like I said, I've already named most of these for you. Uh, you should definitely practice naming and organizing your files. It's very important um, in a professional setting. So I'm going to select all of my glass items, click OK, and then what we're going to do is go to the group pull down menu and I'm going to group those into one group called glass. I'm using uppercase too, just to make it easier for me to 
see that show up inside my select by name list. If I click again, you'll notice that I have display geometry, the filter for that turned on, and I have my group filter turned on. It allows me to see both groups and individual geometries. And right now glass shows up here, it has this bracket around it. Now if I want to get inside of the glass group and manipulate items individually, I'm going to go back to the group pull down menu. Let's go ahead and close this. And we're going to open the group that's selected currently. And once it's open, if I go into my list, you'll notice that the group's items, both the group and its individual items are visible inside of here. It makes it possible for us to go in and select, for example, glass 11. Um, and then of course if we want to put this back into um, its package and avoid having the parts get moved out of alignment, we're going to go back to group and we're going to close that up. Okay, so I'm going to go through here and systematically organize things um, into various groups. Now it might be easier for me to turn the glass off so that it doesn't get in the way. Now you could select a group or any item in the scene and right click on it and you're going to get the pop-up dialog uh, called the quad menu. So if I right click on the glass, we'll pull up to where it says hide selection and that's not working uh, terribly effectively with the screen recording software. So if you right click you'll find that as well. I'm going to go ahead and do mine um, off the recording here for a moment. And if you pull up to where it says hide selected in the quad menu then you'll notice that the item that was selected uh, gets hidden. Should you like to restore that so you can see it again that's what the display tab is all about. So if we go to the display tab menu over here. Uh, we can pull down to where it says unhide, unhide all, unhide by name. If we select unhide by name, we could come in here and see that, hey, glass was hidden. Let's go ahead and select that and unhide it. Likewise, we could just simply select glass and we could also hide, in this case, hide by selected or we could hide by name. So remember that the display tab is your way to turn things on and off. Now, should you choose, in addition to this, not as a substitute to this, it's necessary for us to organize and group for the sake of animation, but we can also take advantage of layers like you're used to using other CAD applications. So in the upper right-hand side here of the, the main menu, I can select and find layers, and we can add layers and organize and add objects onto various layers, not unlike you do um, in any a number of other CAD and modeling applications. Okay, so I'm going to temporary, temporarily hide the glass and then proceed through to organize all of the items in my file into groups. So I've gone through and organized the items that are in the file into a series of groups. Floors, ramp, stair rail, stair. You'll notice that the fin wall, which is the wall about which the stair spirals, um, and the major wall, those have been left outside of a group for the moment. And then we also have doors. Uh, remember that glass has been turned off and so we could always turn that back on. That's why it's not showing up in here at the moment. Now what I want to do is since the doors are inside the wall and I've organized them into their own group and the wall are all, all really part of the wall in the capital sense, I'm going to select those both right now and I can have in this case nested groups. So I'm going to go ahead and group the group and the, the individual a wall item into one large wall group and if we go back to our list we should now see that we have wall. Now if we wanted to get inside and manipulate that once again we could go to the group pull down and open the group and then we'd find the group of doors and the wall object and then we could open up the doors group and get to the individual doors in question. Okay. So now our file is organized and ready to proceed with adding materials, lights, and camera.